Hey there everybody, it's Bruce. I'm back in the shop and Shinrin Technologies was nice enough to send me another product to review. So right now I'm just going to take it out of the box and see what we have. It should be a bike computer. Okay, nice packaging. Looks very nice and professional. So what do we have here? We have a cadence sensor that's going to go on the crankshaft so we know our cadence. We have a speed sensor to go on the wheel to know our speed and we have a mount and of course the computer itself. This one's called the Discovery Pro Smart GPS Bike Computer. To be honest at this point I don't know too much about this computer. They just said they would send it and I said okay I will do an honest review if you send it to me. So it says it has a Bluetooth plus amp plus also has an integrated headlight some kind of warning light you can uh, read your power has navigation GPS tracking okay and a bunch more stuff <laughs> so I see something computer working time 96 hours charging time 2 hours weight is 135 grams that's important to a lot of us I'll show you the mounts and the mount and the sensors when I go to put it on my bike a little bit later. Right now, let's just take a look at the computer. Discovery Pro from zero to hero. Well, I didn't really know it was a zero to begin with, but all right. Very premium feeling box, I can tell you that. Kind of reminds me of getting a new uh, cell phone. Just like their lights that I reviewed recently, it looks like a very comprehensive uh, instruction manual. I'm going to have to take a look at that later. There's the computer itself. Looks like some additional accessories. I'm not sure what they might be, but let's take a look here. So one of them appears to be a charging cable. Uh, this appears to be some kind of handlebar mount, maybe kind of more of a basic one. I'm assuming that this mount here is not included with this uh, computer normally if you were to buy it. Probably this is the default one and then you can buy this one in addition. Okay, let's take a look at the computer itself. Make sure there's nothing else here. Nope. Get that out of the way. Alright, the computer looks pretty nice, uh, pretty normal. <laughs> the only thing that's not so normal about it is it does have a headlight. Let's go ahead and just power it on for the heck of it since we're sitting here. Long hold powers it on. Looks very nice. Looks like you would be able to definitely read that in the dark. It's like backlit I guess is what I mean to say. Okay now the backlighting turned itself off. That's interesting. It, I can already see it's telling me my elevation, 479 meters, which is pretty close to accurate, I think. Seems about right. So, I'm going to go ahead and stop right now. I will set this up on my bike. I'll try to record a little little clip of that, and then I'll, sh I'll, I'll test it out and tell you how it works and all the details about it. So I'm back. It's been three weeks since I did the initial unboxing, and I've got a pretty good chance to use this uh, bike computer and I used it on a variety of different uh, situations both uh, commuting to work, uh, mountain biking, a little bit of gravel, I actually did a gravel race, some road cycling, so I've got to use it quite a bit and I think I have a pretty good impression about uh, what's good, what's not so good and kind of an overall on this computer. So let's start off with the things that I really like about it. Number one has to be the battery. Um, I actually don't know what the battery capacity is, but it is rated at 96 hours, I believe, with the GPS on, which is just blows basically every other bike computer out of the water. It's so good to me um, that I don't even really think about the battery any. It's just, I, I mean, I guess I have to charge it when it gets low, but it doesn't get low that often. So much so that uh, when I go for a ride, I just turn the GPS on at the beginning and really don't think about the battery life any. In fact, I even leave the backlight on the whole time, again, because the battery seems to be almost unaffected. 
I've done a couple rides over over three hours and it just went like one bar from the maximum on the battery with the backlight lit the whole time with the GPS running the whole time so um, yeah the battery life on this thing is just incredible now that's probably due to the fact that it's a pretty simple computer um, it doesn't have so much power features as like the Garmin Edge 1000 that I also have and so that's probably a big reason that the battery lasts so long um, what else do I like about it? Another thing I like about it is the reliability and durability. So I've been using it, like I said, for a few weeks now off and on, and I have had absolutely zero glitches of any, any type. Uh, when you go through the menus, when you do anything, it always works 100% the same. I've never had a glitch like I have occasionally on my Garmin. So yeah, very reliable, very simple, um, and also seems to be pretty rugged. I mean, it looks rugged, it feels rugged, and I've had a couple instances where I tested that ruggedness. So first of all, I had a bike crash. Check that out right here in this clip I'm about to insert. You can see it getting slung around and whatnot. After that, I, I looked at it and it was functioning perfectly. It apparently didn't even know that it had been in a crash. So uh, that there's that. I also dropped it once while taking it off the handlebars right on the concrete floor. Again, no damage, no, no problems whatsoever. And then thirdly, when I had a chain pop off of my uh, bike at one time, without thinking, I flipped the bike over to, to fix it, and this was on the handlebar, so it went straight into the, into the gravel. Uh, again, it didn't care, it was fine. Um, so yeah, it seems to be very rugged, very reliable, uh, excellent battery life, and a bit innovative too. That's the next thing I want to go to. So you have a light on the front, and so you press this uh, button once, now the light's on, press it a second time to make the light a little bit dimmer, and then a third time to turn it off. So I don't know if there's any other bike compu computers out there that have this feature. I think that's really innovative, and it's quite nice. Uh, later on the parts that I don't like, I'll talk a little bit about some of the, some things that could be better about this, but just that it has a light that works is pretty cool. And another cool thing about that light is actually it comes off. It only weighs about 12 grams, so I don't really think it's worth taking off almost for any reason, but if you do want to save 12 grams, I guess you can do that too, or if you need to change it out maybe for some reason, you can do that. And it's it's in there very snugly. And then there's also this light on the front. Now honestly, I never use this feature, but I understand when you reach a certain speed, like I, I want to say it's like 40 kilometers an hour, then this will like flash red to let you know or let others know. I'm not sure, I've never used that. so. Uh, also it has another innovative thing, is, I don't know if it's that innovative, but a nice little feature is this little loop, lanyard loop. I'm not really sure what the idea is there, but maybe if you're leaving the bike computer on your bike overnight or while you're at a restaurant, you can uh, some kind, somehow secure it with a cable or something. Not sure. Uh, what else? Oh, also another thing I didn't mention I think is the value. Now I'm not like a big bike computer guy, so I don't know the price of all the computers all over the place all the time or anything like that but this uh, I, I did check on amazon.com and it showed 139 USD US dollars uh, for this computer which compared to like the Garmin Edge 1000 once again now I, I know it's a little bit difficult to compare them because they are uh, different computers for different purposes to some extent but um, 139 I know the Garmin Edges can be 500 600 bucks I'm not really sure but something in that range so compared to that, you're getting a lot of the same features for a lot less money. So in my opinion, the value of this computer is really good. All right, now let's move on to some of the things I don't like quite as much uh, or that I think could be improved. Number one is I mentioned about this front light for your bike. Uh, that's a nice feature, super nice. But what I find is that actually uh, it's not angled down enough. When I have the, the computer tilted to me a little bit, the light is going off into the sky. So I'm thinking, okay, well, I'll put it exactly flat with the bicycle with the with the ground. And now it should be pointing down a bit. And it is, but not enough. It seems like I actually need to tilt it down several degrees to actually get the illumination on the road where I want it. So I think perhaps if they want to sell these as a new accessory or if they want to make a new one, maybe tilt that down just a little bit would be better. A few degrees, five degrees, I don't know. but. What I do, obviously, to get around it is just tilt the computer away from me a little bit, which isn't ideal, uh, but then it works fine. Um, good thing is, though, you can still read this, uh, these numbers very well. I don't know how well you can, if it's in focus, but... Come on. 
Well, just take my word for it. You can read these almost completely, you know, at this type of angle. So it's not that big of a deal tilting it down a little bit, but just not ideal. So that's one thing uh, could be slightly better. So one thing that this bike computer doesn't have that, uh, that some of the more expensive ones has is a customizable uh, data field. So basically what you see is what you get. Now there's a lot of data here, which is great. And it is in, in good places, and I, I do appreciate the data fields it has, and they, they seem to be pretty appropriate, but it would be nice if you could customize those a little bit. Uh, just, yeah, why not? The one you can customize is the bottom one, so that, that's kind of nice. There's not a lot you can do, but you can kind of do a couple of different modes. My favorite one is the, uh, yeah, but th this one here, this di the direction, so you might be able to see that. It should be showing the direction that you're generally heading. I find that to be actually pretty handy. When I'm somewhere I'm kind of know where I'm at generally, but I'm not sure which direction I'm going, I find, I've been finding that one to be pretty handy. The downside is every time I restart the computer, I'll show you that. So it's shut down now. And you start it back up, it doesn't remember your setting it's at the watts. It always wants to go back to the watts. So that's a small thing maybe they can fix to, uh, to make it a little bit nicer to remember the user's customizable screen preference. Okay? Little things though. That's not a big, those are not to me big deals. Here's my biggest complaint though, and maybe I'm doing something wrong. I can't figure out a way, and I didn't try that hard, but I can't figure out a way to get the GPS files directly off of the computer and onto my my PC. It does have a USB uh, port which is very nicely sealed against weather. It does have a USB uh, port right there. It's like a mini USB micro, I'm not sure, one of those small ones. And that's nice. And I can plug that into my computer and I can charge the device. But it doesn't get recognized as a USB device or anything. It doesn't even seem to, to do anything. So I can't figure out how to directly get the GPS files off of this machine and onto my PC. What I do have to do, uh, it's nice that it has this feature and it's nice that it works, but it's to me it's a little more complicated than it could be. And so the process that I've been using and does work, it's just not the way I always want to do it, is there is a Shinran technology uh, app and what you do is when you go into the app, you tell it to find this uh, bike computer, which is very simple and fast. It pretty much detects it immediately. And then uh, tell it to download the files from this, basically sync this with your app. And then from there, you have to select the, the activity and then upload it into Strava. So if you want to get it in Strava, that's your process. It's kind of a two-step process. It's not hard. It's not bad. And I know these days everybody's doing everything on their mobile. But I'm a little bit old-fashioned, and I want to be able to plug this into my computer and see which files are on it and do whatever. So I, I wish I could do that. Now, one thing to point out is I only have Linux computers at my house. I don't have any Windows or Mac, so maybe there's something there, but normally when I plug in a device like this, it will detect it and at least look at it as a uh, storage medium, storage device. So uh, that, that works fine on my Garmin's and my other. So guys, at uh, Shinran Technology, if you could get, make that possible for me, I would uh, appreciate it. Oh, another funny thing that I've noticed is when I do upload the uh, activities onto Strava, which I always do, everything works fine, everything looks good, except for it always shows the temperature as zero. No matter what the temperature was or is, it always shows it as zero. So as far as I know, this isn't even reading uh, temperature data. So I think it's weird that it's inputting that into the, uh, it's like a KML file or XML file or something. Basically, it's like an XML style file. And I'm not sure why it's putting the, assumedly it is, I've never actually looked at the file, but it seems to be putting the temperature value in there when it's probably not recording the temperature. So it's always showing as zero degrees, which of course is not correct. Okay, so I told you a little bit about what I like about it, a couple things I don't like about it. So what do I think about this uh, bike computer overall? Overall, I like this bike computer. The only thing I have to compare it to is my Garmin Edge 1000, and I also have a uh, Decathlon brand I don't even remember the name right now, uh, kind of dumb computer. So um, it, this one sits somewhere in between, but definitely much, much closer to the Garmin Edge 1000. Really the only thing you don't have, I think, on that computer as compared to this one is the maps feature. 
this computer doesn't give you maps. It does give you turn-by-turn -turn directions, but no maps. Uh, so that's the one difference. For me, basically, at the end of the day, this is probably going to be my go-to computer just because of the battery life, because of the reliability, because it has an integrated headlight, which has actually uh, kind of saved me a couple times after working uh, late nights. Ha having that, I was like, oh, okay, great. I'm glad I have that now. So um, just the reliability and robustness, the battery life, extra light, this is going to be my go-to computer. However, if I'm out of the country and I need, to I need to upload some maps and I need some like detailed map information, but I want to keep my phone battery you know, highly charged, then I might go with the Garmin Edge. Definitely for around Switzerland and around Europe probably even more or less, I'm more likely I'm going to go, to go for this one most of the time. It's definitely on my training rides around my neighborhood will be this one because I already know where I'm at and if I do need to check the map, I can use my phone and I'm not worried about that. So that's about all I have to say about it. I want to say thank you to Shinran Technology for sending me this uh, sample and also for the lights and I'll put a link to the light video also in, in the description in case you're interested in that. Yeah, so thanks for sending me this. I appreciate it. I, uh, I think it's a great product. I think you guys are doing a good job. I appreciate uh, your innovation and your trying to come at a good uh, value point. So it's not the most high end and the most expensive stuff out there, but you're getting a lot of good stuff in it even without being the, the most expensive. Okay, so I guess that's all I have to say about this bike computer. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you find it useful. If you do have any questions about the computer or about anything to do with this video, please do put them down in the comments. If you have another bike computer that's similar to this or you think might be competitive or, or you just think is interesting to discuss in the context, also go ahead, put that down in the comments. I'm curious. Uh, like I said before, I'm not like a big bike computer guy. I don't know everything about bike computers. But um, yeah, if, if you can tell me something I don't know, throw that in the comments too. I'd be, I'd be glad to know if, what other kind of uh, similar bike computers are out on the market. And I'll also put a link to this product in the description as well. Okay, I've rambled enough. Thanks everybody for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Oh, but wait, one more thing I wanted to say. If you're watching this video, still probably the last 30% or so that are watching, uh, thank you. And if you want to join my Facebook group, there will be a link to that in the description as well. Thanks. Bye.